Peru is borders. That is to say, that uh, territorial borders must be left immediately by you and your ship and your crew. You are not allowed, neither you or your crew, to enter any harbor in the Faroes. But the reasons that you gave do not give a reason why we can't enter Faroese waters. Well, um, uh, what do you want? The Parliament in the Faroes simply don't want you in Faroese waters. But if you're, you, telling, if you're telling me, ship. if you're telling me right now we're expelled without having done anything, then the punishment. You are requested. Oh, you were I started. I'm requesting you to leave Faroese waters oh. immediately. So then there is no. So if you don't, you'll get a, a proper sentence. How do we get a sentence without getting a charge? Well, uh, you'll get it from the government, and uh, the government here says that there will be no negotiations at all. With which rather embarrassed message, the Torshaven police leave Sea Shepherd to fight a crime wave at home which hardly exists. The islanders don't have to face the problems all too common elsewhere. We did get customs clearance, so uh, legally we can go ashore. However, the police have advised that we shouldn't go to shore, but uh, I don't really think that there's much validity in that, that advice. Well, the consequences of, of uh, denying to leave would probably something like an arrest or and the ship would be boarded. That's my point of view, but... And what will happen to the crew? I don't know. I haven't a clue. And so a rather uneasy impasse is reached. The Faroese clearly don't want Sea Shepherd, but Sea Shepherd has no intention of going away. The protesters settle down for the night under their convenience flag from St. Vincent in the Caribbean, knowing the morning will bring action of some sort. The two sides could have sat and glared at one another for days, each waiting for the other to make the next move. But that wasn't going to help anyone, least of all the pilot whales. So early next morning, three of the crew members, Veronica Ben, Magnus Alpadre and Al McKay, volunteered to go ashore and test the atmosphere. After all, there was shopping to do, if anyone would serve them, and letters to post for the rest of the crew. While they all realized there was a strong chance that the authorities might put them under arrest, no one felt they could hold them for long and the publicity would be a good thing. So they went and did not reappear. Watson heard over the radio of their arrest and decided to try and recover at least the first inflatable. Two more of Sea Shepherd's crew, American Rod Coronado and Nick Taylor from Britain, roared into Torshaven Harbour and spotted the missing inflatable. But it wasn't alone. On the quayside were police and a growing crowd of Faroese citizens who were not over-friendly. When the Sea Shepherd men tried to cut the first inflatable free, the police waded in to stop them, loudly encouraged by the bystanders. Come on, get off! We're going to stay here and do nothing, OK? Just get off! We do nothing. Stay here, Rob. I have no business of, business of Faroe East soil. Come on, what am I being charged with? What am I being charged with? I have no charge against me. I'm an American citizen and I'm being arrested without any charge put against me. Within half an hour of the second arrests, 
the Faroese press were on board Sea Shepherd to get full Watson's angle. Well, the fact that your police state here has just uh, taken people into custody without charge. There is no charge. We cleared customs in the proper manner. We've got the proper papers. We were invited here by Juliana Clett at the International Whaling Commission when she said all people are welcome to come to the Faroes and view this whale hunt. Well, we happen to be human beings, therefore we qualify in that category of all people. So what kind of double dealing uh, you know, methods are, is this government uh, utilizing? They're hypocrites. Can I, uh, can I have some comments from the press? Yes, no? You have a journalist on board? Well, you're arrested two of our journalists. I see this as a simple police action, really, because uh, they have uh, kind of not observed the passport laws and, and the kind of laws for entering the Faroes area. So I don't see that really as a whaling issue. What nationality other than Canadian? Uh, American, British, Swiss, and uh, Swedish, over. Uh, and now the outside world takes an interest. Pressmen and diplomats keep Watson busy on the radio. Julian Isherwood speaking of the Daily Telegraph of London. I've been given a tip off that something dramatic seems to have been happening in the past 24 hours. We've got a call into the Ministry of Justice here, um, waiting for their decision. We have to hear about your plans now, seven of your men have been taken from the police. You do not intend to give up. Hell no. We've just begun to fight. Here we have a Faroese gunboat uh, in our wake right now that will continue to remain off the Faroes uh, for a word from shore over. And for the next week, Sea Shepherd was to be engaged in a cat and mouse game with the Faroese gunboat. Sometimes the Oliver Halgi would do the chasing, sometimes Sea Shepherd would turn and chase it. Although it was clear that the gunboat was armed, it was also slower than Sea Shepherd by a whole knot. After five days, the Torshaven police asked to come aboard again. With them, they brought two crew members and their inflatable dinghy. They were free, they explained, if Paul Watson signed an expulsion order, barring him from the Faroes and any other Scandinavian country for the next three years. Hard conditions, perhaps, but Watson agreed. For the sake of the crew, he said. The island's ferry took aboard the other three captives who opted to fly home with their expulsion orders. Though Veronica Ben rejoined Sea Shepherd a week later. It looked as if the campaign had lost the first round. Well, I think we uh, have been making progress. The uh, Faroese are certainly overreacting and uh, we certainly haven't any intention of giving up. We'll go back to uh, Scotland, get uh, provisions, see about our crew, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, we have an obligation to the uh, Exeter and Plymouth uh, school children who uh, help fund this mission, and uh, we intend to fulfill that obligation. The Faroese have noted that a lot of people are coming here trying to tell the Faroese what tradition they should retain and what traditions they should give up. The Faroese are not particularly uh, glad to receive people with those attitudes. Of course, this is an open society. People who want to preach new religions, new philosophies, new attitudes towards animals and whales are welcome to do so. But it must be left to, to the Far East to decide. If you compare it to uh, what has been done in other places where they do the slaughtering, the reason uh, what makes people so anxious and so excited about it and uh, furious about it uh, outside it's the blood. You can see the blood and uh, you feel sorry for the whales because you can hear the screaming. But cows, pigs, all, all animals when they get killed they scream. People too. And the Faroese people don't kill any people. Don't send any people off to war. England does. They did it, they sent people down to uh, Falkland Islands, right? America does and other countries do. I'm rather concerned about this picture people are getting about the Far East, that we are, say, barbaric maniacs, bloodthirsty, descendants of Vikings just kind of indulging in blood and all these kind of things. I don't know, I don't like that. I don't, I, and I think it's unfair. The high standard of living of the Far East is reflected in the quality and range of goods on offer in the supermarket. The Far East enjoy prime cuts of meat from Britain and France, just like us.
supermarkets sell whale blubber too, even though under hunting custom it's always held to be non-commercial. I consider it quite important because um, we get some good vitamin-rich food free of charge. Are you worried about the amount of mercury which is alleged to be in the whale meat at the moment? Um, well, of course we are aware of that, but um, don't, I don't think we... Yes, if you don't eat it, they say at the, the doctors and all those, that if you don't eat it more than once a week, it shouldn't be dangerous. And so we hope that's right. The mercury content in the Faroese people are very high, and it is far higher than, uh, for example, in the Danes. Apparently, the increasing pollution of the oceans uh, is affecting the mercury content of the whale meat. People are uh, following, of course, the advice of the authorities uh, regarding uh, how much whale meat should be eaten. And there are 45,000 people here, so even within uh, those limits, uh, they can easily consume 3,000 whales a year. I think it was projected that if you take the population of 45,000 and 8 ounces a week and the average size of whale, you wouldn't in fact need to kill more than about 850 to satisfy that total demand. Um, well, that calculation is simply wrong. You can ask the experts. Uh, for the total population, about eight or 900. But if you take into account that uh, most of Torshav in the capital, uh, which has a population of 15,000, uh, doesn't use whale meat, then it could e even be less than that. Back in the Shetlands, Sea Shepherd prepares for a return to the Faroes, cocoon now in barbed wire. Paul Watson considers the mercury argument. Whales are uh, threatened by pollution, uh, specifically uh, heavy metal uh, pollution, and this is a problem that we have to uh, challenge and uh, we have to uh, stop the pollution of the sea in order to protect the whales. But at the same time, we cannot uh, ignore the fact that they are being treated in such a brutal manner. What's the point of saving them from the ravages of pollution if we're only going to lose them to the uh, barbarous uh, activity in the Faroe Islands every year? I'm very concerned about uh, the fact that the whales may not be able to survive into the next century or beyond. Uh, the whales are uh, fascinating creatures, uh, very intelligent, and the one species that we have uh, a real possibility to establish communications with. And just as we're on uh, the threshold of some very exciting discoveries into the possibilities of interspecies communication, the darker side of humanity is intent upon destroying them and robbing future generations of that possibility completely. Young people are much more sensitive and concerned about the future of the environment of this planet which they stand to inherit. And the fact is, this planet doesn't belong to our generation just because we have the ability to exploit it. The planet belongs to the children. We're simply borrowing it from them. Traditionally, the whale drive and kill has been a social occasion among the Faroese. The crowds would turn out, there would be a feast with dancing. They don't do the whale dance anymore, but the children are still there. Despite the ban, Sea Shepherd breaks into the three-mile exclusion zone, having heard of a pilot whale hunt in Gottvig Bay. There is no sign yet of the gunboat, which might have blocked them in. No sign of the hunt either. So Paul Watson blows something